the use of entheogens in a conscious context is one of the next uh, methodologies for consciousness change. And that is critically important, the last part of that, in a conscious context. This means understanding what an entheogen is, what it does, how to administer it or take it yourself, and to use it for the correct reason, the correct in the correct set and setting, the correct psychological set, the correct physical setting, and for the right purpose. Because these are not toys, these are not games to play. These are consciousnesses to commune with. This is what true communion is. Not a dead sacrament, but an active sacrament. So the word entheogen, if some are not familiar with it, is a psychoactive compound that alters consciousness and helps us to experience a higher level, often a very strange level of awareness that is quite divorced from our ordinary state of consciousness. It is in a state of alternative consciousness, an altered state. The word entheogen means to create the divine within. It comes from the Greek words en, which means within, theos, which means the divine or God, and genere, which means to create. That's Latin, actually. So, to create the divine within is what we can begin to do, begin to recognize the divine within us and to help cultivate it by commun communing with an entheogenic compound. Entheogens have also been called psychedelics. Psyche in Latin, in Greek, means the mind. Delun in Greek is a verb which means to make clear. So we can see things clearly in the mind when we commune with a psychedelic. It, they are capable of making the mind clear if they are used in a conscious context. Some of the most popular entheogenic compounds THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, or cannabis, psilocybin, or psilocybe mexicana, magic mushrooms, um, ayahuasca, or uh, banisteriopsis caapi, um, this is the uh, DMT uh, being the active ingredient, uh, uh, a combination um, that is added to the ayahuasca blend from the chacruna plant sometimes even uh, pure dimethyltryptamine DMT. These are powerful uh, psychoactive compounds, some more powerful than others, that can really help us to go deep within our consciousness and explore the realm of the psyche, within the, the rich tapestry, the rich realm that exists within each of us. And these substances are demonized and these substances are made illegal. Imagine that, naturally occurring compounds found in nature that are off limits to adult human consumption because you don't own your own consciousness. That's what this laws like this, draconian laws like this are saying to us. You as an adult do not have the choice as to whether you feel it proper to modify your consciousness as you see fit. We own your consciousness, and we are saying that this experience is off limits. You are not permitted to modify your own consciousness, which you think you own, in a way that you see fit as a mature, responsible adult. I will tell you whether or not you are permitted to modify your consciousness, because I own your consciousness. Imagine that. That's our laws that we have, in effect, in this country and in most others. And we think we're free. We believe that we are free beings when an experience has been made illegal. An experience in the mind is illegal. Imagine the hubris of the individuals who actually believe that they have a right to even attempt to say that they're allowed to control consciousness in such a way. Hubris. It's utter hubris. It's, that, that's all I can say about it. That's all I can say about it. Without getting 
extremely angry. The word sacrament, it comes from uh, the, 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 the word sacrum, which means holy or sacred, and mente, which means the mind. So again, the sacrament is that which can help to make the mind holy or sacred or whole. So it is uh, entheogenesis or, or induce an altered state. The, the, they're giving you a small piece of bread or something similar. It's an inert sacrament. It's, it's a deadened sacrament. It's not really a sacrament. It's a substitute for the real thing. That isn't what a sacrament is. A sacrament is an active uh, communion with another intelligence. And that's what entheogens are. Not to be trifled with. You try to trifle with these compounds and you'll find out exactly how much they do not really appreciate being trifled with. Um, it, they are consciousnesses. They are consciousness that are, that are there as teachers that we can commune with if we know how to use them in a respectful and conscious context. Terence McKenna, one of my greatest mentors, who sadly is no longer with us, he said, if the words life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness don't include the right to experiment with your own consciousness, then the Declaration of Independence isn't worth the hemp it was written on. We own our own consciousness. It is ours to modify as we see fit. No one can make that decision for us. And I will go so far as to say, no one is bound to obey a law that forbids an experience within one's own consciousness. Period. And when we commune with these compounds, if we do choose to do so, they can open up vistas of creativity because they're really putting us in touch with the intuitive right brain. And then art can flourish from, from a communion with these uh, sacraments. And music can flourish and flow from a communion with these uh, entheogens. So it's one of the ways that we can use them to get really into deeper touch with the creative aspect of ourselves.